Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, we are on lesson 1.4, the distributive property. I really like this one because it makes things easy. Um, I like to think of this one as distributing things. Like if I'm going to distribute papers throughout the room, I want to make sure that everybody gets one. So the way this property looks is that is if I have some number and I'm going to multiply it by these two numbers within the parentheses. We know if we knew what these numbers were, we would add these two up, multiply it by A. But it can also work like this. I can distribute my A across to the B and across to the C, which would turn this into A times, whoops, sorry, I was getting ahead of myself, A times B plus A times C. That's very simple, and they and it works because if you put numbers in there and then you test it out, this does equal this. So let's do a couple of examples. So if I have 4 times x plus 2, I want to distribute my 4 across. So everybody gets a 4, so it's going to be 4x plus 4 times 2, and we know that that is 8. Another example is if I gave you negative 2x times y minus 1. All right, I want to distribute my neg negative 2x across. I'm going to multiply it by y, negative 2x times y, and then negative 2x times negative 1. And we learned earlier negative times a negative is positive. So that's plus, and anything multiplied by 1 is itself, and so that's plus 2x. So there is how we use the distributive property. Now we can go backwards from the distributive property, and we can do what's called factoring. That means we're taking it out. So we'll write that right here. So an example of factoring is kind of the opposite of distributive. If, let's just say, let's just look at this example. I give you a CX minus CY. Well, what do both of these have in common? They both have a C in common. So I'm going to take that one out. I'm going to take the C out, and C is going to, when I take that out, it's going to leave the x minus y on its own. So you know if you did what we did right up here, you would get cx minus cy. All right, let's take a look at another one. I'm going to, and I forgot to tell you, make sure you're looking in your book too. This is lesson 1.4, and I'm on page 21 now. So if I did something like, let's say, my brush size messed up again. Let me fix it. All right. Let's take a look at this one. 9x plus 27y. This time, the variables aren't the same. I can't factor out the variables, but if I look at 9 and 27, I know that 9 is a factor of 27. So I can factor out 9. So I'm going to do that. So if I factor out 9, I'm left with x plus 27 divided by 9 is 3. So I'm left with 3y. So here, I, all I did was simply factor out the 9. That's what they had in common. Now, Another thing we'll, we'll look at is, and you'll use when we do these problems tomorrow, is like terms. Everything you see in these equations are called terms. The 9x is a term, the 27y is a term. So if we look at like terms, that can help us as well with our factoring. So let's take Let's do an example, and I'm going to pull this from number 8. It says x, take away 3x, 
the terms are these alike yes because they both have X's the variables are the same so like terms they're gonna have the same variables All right, so they both have an X. So if I factor out the X, I'm left with, we know this is multiplied by one. So I'm left with one take away three right here. And we know that one take away three is negative two. And I can simply use <clears throat> the commutative property and just turn that around to, to negative two X what that's equal to. Um, if we do another example, let's do another one. Let's do 2x plus 3y minus 5x, okay, minus 5x minus 2y. So if I group together my like terms, I have a 2x here and a 5x here, those have the same variable. And I have 3y here and 2y there. Those have the same variable. So I'm going to put those like terms um, together to make it easy or easier to look to look at. So let's do, let's put the 2x minus 5x together here. I'm going to associate them together with that associative property. And then I'm going to add to that, I have a 3y and a negative 2y. All right. So if I t take what I have right there, now I can factor out my like terms. See those two X's? I'll have X, take it out. Now I'm left with two minus five. And then over here on this side, I can take my Y's out because they're the same. Y times three minus two. And now let's work this out. So, x times 2 minus 5 is negative 3. All right. And then y times 3 minus 2 is 1. And if we simplify that even further, we can use our um, just our commutative property. Turn this around. Negative 3x plus y. Wow, isn't that amazing how this right here is the same as that right there? Kind of crazy, but that's what you do when you factor out your like terms. Now, if we move on down very quickly and we can talk about The multiplicative property of negative 1 is very simple, and I'll just show it to you by an example. If you have the negative, I like to say the opposite, of negative 9y, that is the same as saying negative 1, because anything multiplied by 1 is itself, times negative 9y. And we know that when we multiply a negative by a negative, we get a positive. So that is the same as 9y. All right, just always remember anytime you see a negative, you can think of a 1 being with it because it really is. We just don't have to show it. Now, let's take a look at page 23 we're going to do some examples of the inverse of a sum property so let's change color this is going to be a different type of example take a look at this one you'll see what I mean here in just a second negative this is going to be the inverse because it's opposite negative 3x minus 4y plus 59 now, 
Think of that as being negative 1, and I'm going to distribute it across. So that turns into negative 3x. Negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4y. And a negative 1 times 59 would be a negative 59. That uses um, the inverse of this inverse right here. Now, let's do a couple more examples using the distributive property. Um, so when a sum or a difference is being subtracted, we can subtract by adding an inverse. We can simplify using the distributive property to remove the parentheses. So let's just take a look. It's always easier to see it in an example than it is to sometimes understand all those words that they put in the in the instructions. All right, so if I have 6x, take away, and now in parentheses, 4x plus 2. Now, what I'm going to do is the inverse. All right, so this is going to be the same as 6x plus, now I'm going to do the inverse in here, okay? It's going to get a little funny looking. Negative, there's your inverse, 4x plus 2. This is just helping me see I need to work with this in within the brackets. And I'm putting brackets now so it will look a little bit different than the parentheses. All right, so this equals 6x. We'll kind of stay in here again. Whoops, I forgot to put my plus sign. Let's, do, let's erase that real quick. I'll put my plus sign over here. 6x plus now. Now we'll distribute. This is like a negative 1, so it's negative 4x, negative 1 times 2, minus 2. All right. So now since I did that, I can take the parentheses out. Or I'm sorry, the brackets. 6x plus negative, so this is plus the opposite, so it's going to be minus 4x. Same with this one, going across, minus 2. And we've got some like terms here, so I can put them together. So that becomes 2x minus 2. All right, we will do some examples like this tomorrow in class. Thank you very much.